Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dennis Park. My name is Dalvin Nguyen. I'm Julio Alvarez. And I'm Noah Lee. And we are the Autonomous Cloud Computing Project Group. So today we'll be presenting to you the basics of cloud computing, the back end of cloud computing, which consists of socket connections, the front end of cloud computing, which consists of a web interface, third party resources called from the back end to the front end, Autonomics, our own venture into cloud computing, the fluid flow application, and our conclusions. So basically, cloud computing and fluid dynamics are very applicable to two fields, aerodynamics and the study of medicine. On a large scale, aerodynamics and fluid dynamics can be applied to modeling airfoils and airplanes, whereas on a smaller scale, we can use fluid dynamics to model chills in blood flow and cardiac sets. You can use computer models and physical experiments to model blood flow and flows through systems. However, computer models are usually cheaper and more efficient and they provide a simpler analysis and display of data. However, these computer generations can take a substantial amount of time, sometimes days and even weeks, whenever it's needed to provide the data in an efficient manner. Therefore, our solution, cloud computing using Climate Cloud, about allows researchers to efficiently and productively get results at a time of week. So before we get into Climate Cloud, which is the cloud system that we used for this project, I'll be talking about cloud computing as a concept. It first started off as a concept known as time sharing back in the 1950s when mainframe computers were first being introduced into academia and corporations. Tools known as terminals were used to access these computers and a process that allowed multiple people to utilize a single terminal allowed for the sharing and saving of time. That was the concept known as time sharing. Now, cloud computing is an efficient and timely way in which we can solve increasingly complex problems in a, in a matter that Sorry, increasingly complex problems that our average desktop would not be able to solve by itself. Two important characteristics of cloud computing is its user friendliness and autonomy capabilities. We can compare this to how we use tap water today. Just as how um, if we want more water more quickly, all we have to do is turn the knob and the water, we can increase the output flow of the water just like that with just a few clicks of the button and we can just get, we can increase the amount of resources that we use and the computing power. Also, we don't really care where our tap water comes from. As long as we get the water, it's fine for us. In the same manner, we don't really care where our resources or our calculations are being done, as long as they are being done for us. And this illustrates the autonomy capabilities of the cloud. Of the cloud. It handles everything for us. So the Comet Cloud Framework is, this, is like again, is, this, is the framework that we use for our project. It utilizes a master and worker relationship that connects the user with the cloud system. And we use that to uh, extract information from the Dodd-V Stokes equation, compile all the information, and make it easily accessible in one screen. So a major part of this program was the autonomics. Uh, the term autonomic computing comes from the term from the autonomic nervous system, which is a system that is able to manage itself to perform whatever it has to perform. In the case of a nervous system, it's managing uh, the body. In the case of computing, it's managing a, a computer system. Some elements of autonomics are its self-configuring aspect. It's able to take inventory of what resources it has available and configure them into a way that so it can easily manage itself. Once it's configured, it's self-optimizing. This means that it will be able to select which tasks to run and which tasks to run when in order to get the fastest speed or the most cost-effective uh, way of measuring them, amongst other things. In addition, it's self-protective. This means that it's able to protect itself against attacks or unwanted access so it's not compromised and the system can continue to function as normal. However, it is also self-healing, so if for some reason part of the system fails, for example a power outage, it's able to work around that and continue to process the task and deliver results to the user without interrupting whatever program they may be running. So we can extend the concept of autonomy computing to the Navier-Stokes equation which were developed by Claude Louis Navier and George Gabriel Stokes. And these equations basically provide an overview of fluid properties. And they're a series of complex differential equations, which are extremely computationally extensive. And as you said before, they can take up to days or weeks to compute. So basically, we can use the cloud system to generate information from these equations, relay it back to several servers to calculate, then relay it back to a master server for researchers to use, and easily get it in a timely and efficient manner. And these hundreds of images can be used to compare in many applications as well. And therefore, it's very efficient to use the cloud for this instead of one supercomputer, which would take a lot of time. 
So our main goal for this project was to develop a framework that ran the fluid flow application and allowed for users to utilize the resources. We implemented a user-friendly interface to enable anyone who uses it, scientists, anybody, to be able to use the resources in the best way possible. And we also defined and implemented these interfaces between the front end, which is the interface that the user interacts with, and the cloud engine, which, compute, which does all the calculations for us. We implemented a Java program to serve requests between the common cloud and the user. So another one of our goals was to develop fluid simulations to be relayed to the front end of the application. And these, these simulations of fluids are very helpful to researchers, as for example, in cancer research, we can use fluid properties and pillars modeled in microchannels to help remove blood cancer cells from healthy blood cells and help regular blood flow regulate and spread throughout the body. Certain fluid flow properties can help us generate these various simulations, including pillar location, pillar diameter, microchannel height, and the Reynolds number. And in order to access our application, we can input properties in three fields, a minimum number, a maximum number, and an interval. So for example, for a minimum number, if you put in two and our maximum, we put in eight, we would be sending four tasks to the server in the interval of two, and therefore we can easily distribute this to work with clients. In a cloud, there are multiple machines working at once, but in order for these machines to work together, they have to have a communication. The medium of communication that we used was known as a connection, specifically a socket connection. A socket connection is the relationship between a server and a client. This can be thought of as a master and worker relationship, where as you can see, there's one master here and multiple workers. The master will receive data from the user and then distribute this data into even tasks and send it to the client. So for even distribution, these clients will then calculate these tasks and send the results back to the master, where the master will integrate all this data together. This is known as uh, the connection as shown by these lines over here. These would be the connections, the server connections. And the type of connections that we first exper experimented with was a Java client, which would be there, and a Java server. But then, uh, well, at first we used this Java client, Java server, in the program Java Eclipse on the operating system Windows 7. We established a successful connection, but in the end we decided this was not the best way to uh, make our program in the cloud because we would want to use PHP because of its compatibility with HTML, which is the basis of the web page interface where the user will enter the information to go to the master server. So in the end, we use PHP. But in order to use PHP, you have to have a server. And as high school students, we have not access to such a server on our own. So we borrowed that of Rutgers University, and its name is the Amazon EC2 machine. And using this Amazon EC2 machine, we were successfully able to establish a connection from the master server to the client and to the user interface. So the user interface that Don was just talking about was developed using HTML, PHP, and CSS. For the overall structure and formatting of the website, we used HTML. And that's basically a language of tags, and this care takes care of all the text, all the location and formatting of the website. For the visual aspects of the west website, we use CSS, and this care takes care of the layout, the look and style of it. So stuff like margins, fonts, and colors, all the visual aspects of the website are taken care of by CSS. For the functionality of the website, where the user inputs the data and clicks a button to get their results, we use the language of PHP. And this, all these languages combine together to allow for easy input and fast results with just a few clicks of a button. And this is our initial version of our web interface. As you can see, it's very bland and bleak. It doesn't have much going on. This is our second version. And as you can see, it's, great. it's um, a lot more visually appealing than the last one. We, there's still not much, that much going on, but we have a button, we have text boxes, we have all the text and everything. And this is our final version of the web interface. You, you can see that we have a section added for resources to show which resource, which supercomputers we are calling upon to use for this application. We have, a, we have two buttons, one for computing and one for actually displaying the results. And the map, as you can see over on the right, shows that our resources aren't just local resources. Cloud computing is something that is very broad, and we call upon resources not only from, our, from the area that you were in, but also from all over the world. So we have a resource in uh, Sierra, San Diego, and there's also a supercomputer in India and Indiana. So some of the resources that Dom and Ness have been referring to, the Amazon EC2 machine, which allows us to make this socket connection to the Java server. This is a machine hosted by Amazon, the shopping company, um, which is, allows us to host the HTML files and host the PHP files so that the user actually sees a website and they see some uh, graphics there instead of just plain text. Additionally, we have the HPC resources. This stands for High Powered Computing. These are the computers that are actually processing the data and running these calculations. 
These are important to the server because otherwise we wouldn't have an application running. We would just have user inputting some data and nothing would happen to it. So the fluid flow application as a whole works as follows. First, the user inputs their data here on the UI. They'll input their, all their parameters and which resources they want to use. And this will all be sent by way of sockets to the Java master server. The master server will take all this information and compile a list of tasks that need to be performed in order to complete all the jobs that the user wants. These tasks are then put in a list, and the worker servers pull individual tasks from that list to compute. Once each individual small task is computed, it's returned to the master server, which then is able to compile all the tasks into the end result. This result is um, compiled together, and it's made very easy to use and easily accessible. Um, additionally, it compiles all the images of the fluid flows. And this is all sent back to the user, back to that front end web page in step eight. So the user can easily access this data and use it for something useful instead of having just a list of numbers. In this way, the application works as a whole. It's very comprehensive, but the user does not have to worry about anything on this side. All they have to worry about is putting in all their information and hitting submit. So again, we are using the cloud, but why are we using the cloud? This is, as mentioned before by Dennis, of the benefits, because of the benefits of the cloud that uh, the cloud provides. This is specifically the optimization factors of the two categories of speed and cost. As this graphic shows, when we compute the Navier-Stokes equation, one known machine on the left over here would take approximately a couple days, maybe even a week, to calculate all the uh, equations at once. But instead, a cloud would take approximately maybe four to seven minutes. This effectively reduces time and speed, well, increases speed. This would reduce time by about 1,800 times, uh, effectively uh, increasing speed by a great amount. In, in addition, we can also uh, decrease cost by a significant amount. As you can think, a cloud is something you borrow, because we do not own the resources, but we are instead connecting to external resources and using them. So instead, you would pay for what you use. So this, you can think about this as when you buy a car. Let's say you want to drive a car for about two years. You do not want to buy a car and pay for the lifetime of the car, pay all the expenses for about 10 years. Instead, you would lease a car for X amount of time. So this is basically the same um, way of using, the same process. In this example, this, uh, this is an example of speed optimization. As you can see, this would be a cloud because there's more than one server running at a time. These uh, nodes over here represent the tasks and as you can see, this top task would take about five minutes to run. But at the same time, as server one was running a task at five minutes, server two and server three were empty. So they pulled other tasks over here and start running them at the same time. So, at the same, uh, so these uh, servers run parallel to operate tasks in a uh, timely fashion. So as you can see, there are a total of six tasks here. Uh, this, take, this only took a total of five minutes to run all three tasks, all six tasks in these three servers. Instead, if you only had, let's say, server one, it would take all, about 15 minutes to run all six tasks. Instead, you reduce your time from 15 minutes to five minutes. This is a, a drop of 60% of speed, I mean, of time. So the fluid flow application, as I was mentioned before, allows the user to easily input the parameters. But then everything after that was actually performed by an application developed at Iowa State University, which is being used for Rutgers research. And that's, that program is actually the one that performs the calculations and compiles the results. But we were responsible for um, getting the user to easily input their parameters and transfer it to that master server, which then took over from there. Uh, eventually, the data is returned in a compact, easy to use form, so the researchers are able to take that data and use it for their research instead of manually assembling the data into a usable form. This way, it saves time, and money, and man hours for the researchers so they can do their scientific research without worrying too much about number crunching. And now we will demonstrate our actual fluid flow application. So now we will go to the web page. So as you can see, this is uh, the IP address. That would be the IP address of the Amazon EC2 machine. So we've already preset and put some numbers in here. The microchannel height and the location are all these parameters that Julie mentioned before and their min, max, increment fields. So then we select the resources down here. We select the Excalibur and Spring. We're actually located in New Jersey. Um, then we will press the compute button. And these results will be sent to a master server elsewhere. But uh, please note that these uh, calculations have already been preset and pre-done before this presentation. This this is because in the interest of time, this would take about four to seven minutes to run. So we already have the results for you. So now we will display the results. And as you can see, the results now display 
uh, task 56, for example, has been uh, executed in spring, while maybe task 2 has, uh, ex has been executed in Excalibur. And these uh, images, I mean, these links would lead to images of the actual fluid flow. As you can see here, this would, this would have been task 56. As you can see, this is an uh, image of the actual property of the fluids running through the channel. And this would be another image produced through this channel. So as you can see, ultimately, cloud computing can be used in many applications, including researching, and in our venture, fluid dynamics, medicine, business, and a lot of others. As you can see, one computer is inefficient for compiling all the data together at one time. So we must use the cloud to regain these resources, distribute them, relay them back, and then easily and efficiently get researchers to use them. This would take a lot less time instead of days or even weeks, and we would be able to get our results in four to seven minutes. So our cloud proposes a solution to reduce time, optimize cost, and even optimize energy. Our web interface conclusively allows for easy access and enables end user interaction, and thus researchers can get their products in a more efficient amount of time. We would like to thank our mentors, Dr. Javier Diaz Montes, Dr. Ivan Rodero, and Dr. Manish Bashar for guiding us through, throughout this project. We would like to also thank our dedicated, awesome residential teaching associate, Neha Desai. <laughs> In addition, we'd like to thank Eileen Rosen and John Patrick Antoine, respectively the Director and Assistant Director of the New Jersey Governor's School Program. And also, we would like to thank all the sponsors of the Governor's School of Engineering and Technology for making all of this possible. Uh, these sponsors would be Rutgers University, the State of New Jersey, Morgan Stanley, New Jersey uh, Resources, South Jersey Industries, PSNG, and also we would like to thank all of the GSET alumni community. So we'd like to thank you for your time and attention, and at this time, we'll take any questions. Thank you. Yes? Just curious to know if there is any reason for you using the CSS spreadsheets when you are giving an XML over the XML spreadsheet. You are using all the latest technology, Java, cloud computing, and all, but CSS is kind of 10 to 10 years before for HTML and is it because of natural of data that you are processing your processing your data or just want to well, coming into this project, I actually did not know anything about HTML or CSS. So um, we, uh, we just started experimenting with the basics. So we uh, decided to use HTML and CSS because that's what Google told us to use. Yes? Uh, where are the aqua love computers in the cloud? Where are the actual? And, and what, what, what it is, is it uh, Intel-based or uh, computer? Um, they're spread out throughout the country, basically. So our main server that we're using, Excalibur, is in Rutgers, but the other ones that we have, India, for example, is in Indiana, Sierra is in Nevada. So we can get the data from there and relay it back and then send it out again. So basically, it's easier for us to compile on multiple computers than one. So who maintains them? Is it uh, like a... Uh, as of now, we're using the EC2 machine, so Rutgers is maintaining the resources. So yeah. So if the servers in other states are maintained by their uh, host universities, Sierra is maintained by San Diego University, in the India by Indiana University, I believe. Do they charge you for the use of the servers and how they like money? Um, we have access to them through Rutgers, but I would imagine if they're using them commercially, then yes, they would be. Yes. Uh, what's the advantage to you of like choosing only Excalibur in spring when you run the uh, the analysis, why wouldn't you just pick all five? Wouldn't that be faster? Uh, yeah, you could pick all five, but we just picked the for demonstration purposes. Okay. Yes? So the master computer will be located in the site where you are running the software, whereas the uh, state computers will be spread all over the world? Yes, correct. Yes. Yes. Why do you show for this? Because across the company or across the, even my company has a computing resource, usually they don't want to share with the outside users. So I don't know if for, this is only for experiment. So yeah, we would uh, we would maybe look into cybersecurity in the future for implementing implementation of our project. But as for now, this is just experimentation. So we did simple uh, connections for now.